Okay, can you hear me again? Sounds good. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I, I certainly want to welcome everybody to this session of uh, ASCM 629 and 631 SCM Globe uh, review of the uh, SCM Globe application. Uh, it's intended that everybody's uh, spent the first week trying to use the software and this webinar is going to be most effective for those people to ask questions that they weren't clear about from the user manual or issues that they encountered during the course of doing the simulation. Uh, Michael uh, and Steve are going to walk us through the application. Uh, it's an important part of the UMUC curriculum to try to give people an opportunity to practice what we teach. And I hope that uh, you'll enjoy using this software uh, as a means to understand better some of the relationships within a supply chain. So with that, my word over to you. And Mariah said that she'll probably tune in for the last 15 right. minutes. Right, right. Well, and also, Jim, do you have some some words to impart this evening? Um, just a little more than what Frank said. He um, tied it up very well. The um, uh, objective tonight, of course, is to um, ask questions. Um, we um, this semester got the um, names um, um, and linked it up with Michael to get the software to you a little earlier than we have in the past. And I, I think that worked out quite well, um, both with the students um, participating in the course as well as I'm um, getting on tonight. I show 19 people uh, on this right now. So um, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, as usual, you did superstar work and we appreciate it very much. And um, as Frank said, you know, for ASCM 629 and 631, this is an outstanding moment um, to learn um, from the master himself, uh, or sh I should say the masters, Frank uh, and Michael and Steve. So um, thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. I think what we want to do is if if folks could start to type questions into the chat box, what we'll do is focus our time on those questions. We can we certainly can show you a few things, but it sounds like because you folks have all had more time, you've been exploring on your own. So we don't want to repeat things you already know. But I bet there's some things that you, you are a little uncertain about or saying, how the heck do I do that? Whatever is causing a question mark to appear in a thought bubble above your head, type that into the chat box. And, and while you're typing, I'll just, our, one of our favorite things is to remind everyone that in that getting started section which is when you click on that blue get started now button it'll take 15 to 30 minutes depending on you know we all absorb information at different speeds uh, but within 15 to 30 minutes you're going to be able to go through the six steps here step one two three four and five and six and you'll be you'll be ready to go to get started that doesn't mean you'll know everything and nor is it there's there's no point in trying to know everything before you start it's so much better to learn enough to get started and then start and then as you start to work on things you can always and what i'm going to do is i'll go ahead and log in you can always then click on that blue help button and you know, wherever you are whatever uh, screen you may be in, like, like this is opening up to a, a supply chain that I'm working on, or if I'm in my my account screen, or if in my simulator screen, any screen you're on, it's going to have that blue help button. If I click on that blue help button, you know, help is at your fingertips. So that's really important. And then we also note that in in the uh, when you click it, click on the blue the blue uh, help button you're going to come to the table of contents getting started is just one of the sections in in the table of contents or these they're laid out the main sections here are in buttons as well as on almost every screen on the on our website you can see a table of contents down here fairly detailed 
uh, but we tried to really make them clear, short, sweet, not use jargon or confusing technical talk. So what you seek, again, we want it to be at your fingertips. And if you find something is really, you, you can't figure it out, you can always submit a help ticket. And I'm going to flip back to the application screen and you'll always see one of the tickets one of the buttons in the upper right corner there is support ticket if you click on that you can say hey what the heck is happening the more specific you are in your questions of course the more specific our answers can be and do we have some uh, some questions in the chat box not yet not yet <laughs> i know that we mm -hmm. this is a good turnout so you you folks are brimming with questions. I'm certain of it. All right, here's one. My issue is that uh, my computer speakers. Oh, all right, Frank is kind of right, but my Microsoft camera. <laughs> ah, I know. The day that this technology all really works well, we will truly be set free. Until then, everything is easy once you know how to do it, and it's the knowing how to do it that's the hard part. Uh, it's that learning curve. Um, so Frank's gonna, Frank. Also, if you just log on and log log off and log on again, that might also that will often clear up a lot of problems. Okay, I think what we're gonna do then is how many? Um, I'll, I'll ask questions and and you can type answers into the chat box. What I'm gonna do is we'll start here. I am going to go to I'm going to load up Cincinnati seasonings. Okay, we've got we've got a question here uh, for week three, and I'm guessing um, Jake, week three, you're referring to Cincinnati seasonings. Uh, is there a set length for how long you want the simulation to run? Yes, we always say that make it run for 30 days. 30 plus, and I'll tell you why. The reason 30 days is the number is because 30 days is how, that's how how many days there are in a month, 30 or 31 days in a month. We'll kind of stick with 30. And once you get 30 days worth of simulation data, you can download that data and create a monthly profit and loss statement, which will start to give you an objective way of comparing different ideas and it will also start to point out areas in the supply chain model where you can make improvements. So that, and, and we recommend let it run a little bit past 30 days because then you can you know, let it run for 33 or 34. And then you can trim it off. You want a nice clean cut at 30. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'll, and I don't know, I've obviously been uh, making some changes to this this version of Cincinnati, but let's see if I run it. How many days of day we get? And then I'm also going to refer to where we talk about that in the online guide, and we'll get that. We'll run that, and then I'm going to take a look in the online guide. One of the uh, I'm going to go to the getting started section, and we're always based on feedback that we get, questions. We're all, always improving what we have in the online guide, making it clearer. Uh, one of the things that we're finding is we've, we've added more to step number five, how to work with case studies. So um, sometimes I think people, um, what we're trying to do here with step number five is just give you an overview of the whole thing. We're using Cincinnati seasonings as the main case that we talk about, but it's relevant to any of the cases that we do. So, you know, basically probably a good idea to just glance at this. And here's the reason why I say that is number one, you, you, you all, I think probably know there's no single right answer. This isn't a multiple choice test. There are many ways. Um, this is, we hope as close to the real world as you can get without actually being in the real world. And the idea is that 
What you learn in simulations, when the simulations are accurate representations of the real world, what you learn in a simulation is equally appropriate in the real world, and it's a heck of a lot faster and less expensive to learn in simulation than to learn in the real world often. So one of the things that we say here is, you know, how you, we kind of talk about how you can explore ideas. Each week has a new challenge. You know, you're flipping back and forth between the edit tab and the simulate tab where you've got your edit screen and your simulate screen. And as we go on down, notes for working with these case studies. Good idea to just quickly check through these. Uh, here's why we say, you know, typically 30 to 60 days. Um, the job of furniture company is an advanced case. It runs, we advocate 60 days on that. Anyway, most companies use something called SNOP, Sales and Operations Planning. Uh, it's a monthly, typically a rolling month planning. You're in a world that is as uncertain as ours. The, the way ahead is planned in 30 day increments. Um, no matter how much data you would have poured into your artificial intelligence, machine three months ago, it never, ever, ever would have predicted what has happened now. So that's where real intelligence, aka human beings, using these kind of simulations on a rolling 30-day cycle, that's what, we're, that's what we're saying. What you learn here is what you would also be able to use in the real world. We also talk about products, typically you're, you're measuring products at a pallet load, you know, you're not measuring the eaches, as they say in the warehouse, you're measuring the cases. So if you're shipping laptops, for instance, you wouldn't be shipping individual laptops, you'd be measuring your, typically your cases. Often what we're showing here in the case studies are not the, the last mile delivery, you know, like from your local Amazon DC, right outside of Chicago where I live. Uh, to me personally, those last mile deliveries are eaches but for the most part, and most supply chains are shipping uh, from warehouses to high volume customers, B2B, or you know, even Amazon is shipping uh, from suppliers to its regional warehouses, in between regional warehouses. So that's mostly what we're focused on. The, uh, you know, what, what we say here is make your models realistic as you start to add new stores and other facilities in your, in Cincinnati seasonings or collaborative. We'll, we'll touch on that. You can zoom in. Um, the more realistic you make your model, the more realistic your simulation results will be. There are some default values, which you, you really should, and, and they're mentioned in the Cincinnati seasonings case, which you should leave be unless your professor says you're you're free to change them, but otherwise leave them, use the defaults. And then the simulations generate a lot of data. And, and you've, I think, I don't know, do people know how to download? Have you found <clears throat> where to download the, the template that will allow you to create these P&Ls? I can show you that, let me know. If that... Mike, uh, Mike, before you go there, yeah, go we do have a person that asked a question <laughs> Uh, her, you know, she's at, uh, um, someone's having difficulty with getting the, you know, train to supply chain to work without breaking for the right. 30 days. Right. Yep. And she's asking, do you have any tips? So yeah. uh, Frank wrote to her, you know, and indicated that the simulation actually tells you why it stopped. Um, right. But uh, you know, she's she's Let's struggling with how to uh, put it together. I think. All right. Well. well all questions are good questions, and I'm gonna I'm gonna run this. It'll it'll break. I don't think I've made this run for three days. Let's see. I'm gonna speed it up, make it go real fast. Let's see how far this will run. And if it runs for three days, I'll go and make a change, and we'll break it. And then we'll talk about ways to respond when the simulation finds problems. Uh, maybe it is gonna run for three days. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, let's break it. Let's break it. Okay, good. We're going to break it. What I'm going to do is I am going to go to the library and I'm going to download a fresh copy of Cincinnati from the library and then we'll run it. We'll talk about what we can do to respond to problems. And here we go. All right. 
Yikes and C. So, so uh, someone asked, someone else is asking, how do you create the PNL report? We, yep. you will get back to that. Right now, I we're just going yeah. to how to overcome a challenge to get the 30 days data. Uh, yeah, one we'll example work. of how to do it. We're not going to provide answers to the uh, to the whole thing, but we'll just give you an example of how to right. overcome one stop. Um, and then Mike will go on to show you how to uh, download the data so you can have your own PNL. We'll 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 give a as they say in business, we'll give you a throw money at it kind of solution, which is. It'll work, but it'll be really expensive and it won't be a great solution. And it will be something though that shows you the whole problem solving approach here that that we recommend. This is the way you should be working with these. So I've just downloaded Cincinnati right from the library. I am, you know, you've all got a sense here. And, and also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the introduction to Cincinnati always think it's a really good idea to take a look at the online introductions both Cincinnati and collaborative have introductions so there's Cincinnati I'll click on that and again good idea to just scan through this stuff but it'll, it'll tell you a lot about the background and how to approach it so schematically we've got a factory a warehouse and three stores pretty simple right if you own that company and you're hiring someone and you said to yourself I just need someone to you know to manage the the products coming out of the factory run the warehouse and make sure we get our three stores supplied with products every day so that they don't run out how hard could that be couldn't be that hard couldn't be that hard ah so anyway you can take a look through here I'm going to go back now and we'll run it. I'll just click on simulation. And then we'll play that. And at the end of day two, we are going to find a problem. So in a, what the simulation is doing is it's comparing what is in effect your demand plan with your supply plan. And whenever it finds a, a case where either supply or demand is out of sync, it stops and it reports this problem. In this case, we have too much supply because we've run out of storage space in the Fort Wayne store. So I put the question out to the audience, what would you guys do? If you were in charge of this supply chain and there you are in Cincinnati and you get a call from the store manager in Fort Wayne saying, whoa, we have, you've sent us way too much product. We've run out of places to put it. What would you do? Open question. And I'm gonna flip back to the screen, which is where we'll exercise our executive judgment and make changes. So what what's what would someone do if we have this problem, too much product in Fort Wayne? I would take the product back to the warehouse for the other stores. Yeah, you can do that. And you know what I could do is I could have one, I could have a truck that would run up to Fort Wayne and pull it back right away, and, you know, um, or I could deliver less product up there, or I could expand the storage space available. I mean, that's kind of a throw money at it kind of solution. Um, but all of those solutions are potential solutions. Another one is increase the delay between deliveries. Absolutely. If you increase the delay between deliveries, like for instance, if I, when the simulation runs in the academic version, every vehicle that is assigned to a delivery route will leave its base and run its delivery route and deliver its products in return. So that always happens once. But if I didn't want a vehicle to make any more deliveries, I could then make the delay between delivery something like a thousand hours. That would be beyond 30 days and it would never run again. Or I could simply 
delete the um, the vehicle that delivers products to Fort Wayne or delete the uh, if that vehicle is delivering to more than one facility, I could delete the route segment that goes to Fort Wayne. Um, so there there are a lot of potential answers. Time goes by quickly, and in the interest of speed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the the down and dirty answer, and actually, you know, the least effective answer, but it will work, and that is we'll just increase the storage space. You know, this is kind of a sweep it under the rug solution, <clears throat> but the idea at first is just get it to run for three days, then we'll download that data, we'll generate a PNL, and then we'll start to take a look at it, and you know, we can. When you get the numbers, it's hard. It's harder to hide all your mistakes. So let's do this. First thing here, I can see my max storage in Fort Wayne is 850. Uh, uh, maybe I'll just double that. You know, like let's make it 1600. What the heck? I'm going to make it 1600. I'm going to click update. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to go back to a simulate screen. I'm going to reload that supply chain because I just made those changes to the model and we'll run it again and we'll see what happens next. So I'm going to click on play. How many people have already been playing around um, with, and obviously some of you have, have already started uh, playing with your simulations and and the idea is to just start playing with ideas uh, hopefully the software is going to become pretty easy um, if, if people have specific questions about the software let's let's address those but what we want is for the software to become kind of obvious you know as we say intuitively obvious easy to say hard to design software that's intuitively obvious but um, all right, so now our, our second error is we've run out of spicy cube. So first we had too much spicy cube up there in Fort Wayne. Then down in Louisville, we have run out of spicy cube. So I open the question up to the audience again. What would you do if you were the person? There you are in Cincinnati, and now you get a call from store manager in Louisville saying, hey, I've run out. I need more product. I'm turning away customers. We've run out of the spicy cube. What would what are some ideas? What could you do? Have extra fl um, flown from the access store to the, the lacking store. Yes, you could do that, and we could. Yeah, we could we could have a an airplane like take off from Fort Wayne International Airport and fly down to Louisville. Absolutely, we could do that. Um, we could uh, increase deliveries. Yes, you could increase deliveries down to um, Louisville. Um, very expensive, someone is saying. I think referring to flying. Air freight is super expensive. Air freight works best with um, light, uh, small volume, high value products, you know, like high high end electronics and pharmaceuticals and things like that. Uh, the spicy cube is probably not valuable enough to air freight on a consistent basis. Overnight delivery and increased weekly deliveries. Yeah, I um, create a second delivery. Yes, all good ideas. Let's do this. Let's go. We're on the edit screen now. We're going to take a look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the refresh button and just you know, redraw my, my supply chain on the edit screen. And... So we know that right now, if, if you, one of the things that it's a good idea when you're in the edit screen to familiarize yourself with the structure of the supply chain, create a mental model. As we flip through, like when I look at facilities and I click on them, you know, you, you get the little dialog box. It tells you about that facility. When you click on a facility, here's what we need to know. Um, one of the things you'll note is that I can always tell if there are vehicles assigned to a facility because 
I click on where there are vehicles, like the DC, and I see the blue lines. Those are the blue route lines. So this tells me right away, and I can see a little truck icon there, but there's more than one truck at the DC. But nonetheless, this tells me I have vehicles assigned at the facility where I just clicked, and I can see the route lines for all of the vehicles. So if I then click on vehicles, here they are. And by extension, if I click on a vehicle, I can see the route line so I know where it goes. I can see truck two goes to Louisville. I can see truck three is going to Indianapolis. Truck four is going to, it's going to Indianapolis and then up to Fort Wayne and then back to the DC. So it's a multi-stop route. And then truck number one is also going down to Louisville. So my 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 challenge now is how to get more product down to Louisville. I can see, well, hey, I got I got two trucks already running down there. What's the problem? I can see truck number one there. I can see it's a small truck right there. And there are other trucks, there are other kinds of vehicles available. Like here, you know, here's an airplane. I know I could I could hire a helicopter to land on the roof at uh, Fort Wayne and buzz on down to Louisville if I want to, or I could run it out to Fort Wayne International, etc. I'm going to try some other things. I'm going to take a look at that other truck that runs down to Louisville. That was truck number two. And it also is small. When I look at what my products are, and I look at the, the, the cube weight and volume for my products here, I can see we the size is one cubic meter. We did that just to keep the math easy. So if I have a truck where my max, my carry volume is 40, that means I can get 40 of these these you know cubes in there in that truck. If both trucks were small, they both take 40. If I max out both, I'm only getting 80 down there. What is my demand in Louisville? I can go take a look in my SIM screen. I can see here we are. Uh, my demand in Louisville is 100 per day. So let's see. Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to change truck number two to be a large truck. What the heck? And I can see now my carry volume is 110. So I know I only, only need 100 every day down there in Louisville. I think maybe I've got it. My delay between departure is 20. Um, I'll tell you why that's important in a second. So I'm going to say update. Yes, update truck number two, make it a large truck. So we're going to go back to vehicles. We'll click on truck number two now. And we're going to click on routes and that since he to Louisville route, I'm gonna, getting a lot of boxes open. Um, don't want to get all the screen all cluttered up. So you only need the box for the entity that you're working on to be open. And now instead of dropping 20, I'm going to drop 100 because that's what we know we need up uh, in down there in Louisville. I'm going to update that. And now I also know and probably. Um, could save some money right off the bat by that other truck that runs down there, that other, the, the other little truck, truck number one. I don't even need it because I got, got it handled with that one big truck. So I'm just going to click on remove, remove that truck. And there we go. All right, we're good. So what I'm going to do now is, is see, hey, let's, let's, did that solve my problem, my Louisville problem? And I'm going to reload the supply chain from my SIM screen, and let's see what happens. All right, play that. We'll make it go fastest. Here we go. It's always a good idea to refresh your screen uh, after you've made the changes. Uh, it will automatically load. It's just if you have any issues, refresh your, refresh your screen. When in doubt, hit hit browser refresh. All right, we we have we have one last problem here. I think not enough storage capacity in the seasonings factory. Now, if we go back here, we could obviously do what we did in Louisville, or I mean in in Fort Wayne. We could just say, well, we'll we'll increase the storage capacity at the factory. There are other other answers though. What would other people do in addition to just increase the storage capacity at the factory? Are there some other thoughts? Are there other thoughts? This 
I have a feeling, knowing this case as I do and, and knowing the, the path that I've taken through it, that if we can solve this problem, we're going to get it to run for a little bit more than 30 days. It's not going to be a brilliant 30 days, but it's going to run. What what other things now, other than increasing my storage capacity at the factory, what else could I do if, if I want to resolve this problem? Because if I go and look at my simula simulation screen, and here's where you want to start to get a handle on, is I click through. Like, you know, when I look at what's going on in the factory, my on hand is going up. We know that because we ran out of room to store it all. If I look at the DC, my on hand is going down. If I look in Louisville, my on hand is flat because we've balanced supply with demand. We're, it needs 100 every day. We're running 100 down there every day in that new truck. So we're good there. Uh, later on, we're going to want to circle back and, you know, make this line even lower because in effect all this inventory underneath the blue line is dead it doesn't it's non-turning inventory it's you could call it safety stock but it's way too much for safety stock even all right indianapolis i'm i'm going up the the patterns here all mean something i'll point out that in the user guide where you can find that but uh the fact is generally we're going up so we know we're delivering more than we need. Uh, and, and same thing in Fort Wayne. We're delivering, whenever you see the lines going up, it means you're delivering more than you need. When you see it going down, it means you're not delivering enough. When you see it more or less flat, that means that's good. All right. If my problem is I want to, I, I have to deal with this issue of running out of space at the factory. Well, how about this? I'm going up at the factory, but look, I'm going down at the DC. Maybe I'll just move more to the DC. My rent costs are lower at the DC as well. And I know all my deliveries to the stores happen from the DC. So let's just do that. I'm going to go to the edit screen. Now, I, as I'm saying this, I hope you're not just taking notes because this isn't the quote right answer. It's not even a really clever answer. It's, it's just an answer to show you how to think about stuff. There's many things you could do and, and copying things like what I'm telling you is probably going to get you into trouble because you should only, you should think carefully about it. <laughs> All right. What is this? We are going to say um, at the factory... We're going to click on factory. I can see there's a blue line, so I know I got a truck there at the factory. I'm going to click on it. There it is. It's the factory truck, and it's just a little truck. It's buzzing back and forth. I can see it's a medium-sized truck. No, they're medium. Buzzing back and forth. Uh, it's got a delay between eight eight hours. So it means it runs its – the delay between departure means it runs its its route and then it waits, for, comes back to where it started, waits for eight hours and runs it again. Um, so if we take a look, here is the route itself. I'm going to get rid of that box. So what we have then is it's the, the time here is taking a third of an hour, so like 20 minutes to buzz up there and back, unloading up, you know, a bunch of boxes, um, boxes of the spicy cube, and then coming back to the factory. It's dropping off 30 every time it runs. You know, every eight hours since it runs so quickly, it looks like it's, for the most part you'll get you get in about three three runs a day. So three times 30 is 90. So we're getting 90 up there every day. That's probably not enough. Uh, let's do this. Let's make that factory truck a big truck. I'm going to do this. There it is, big truck. Love those big red trucks. Okay, I'm going to click update, and then. We're gonna we're gonna instead of dropping off 30, let's drop let's max out the truck. You no, know, like 110. It'll carry 110. Now, if I try to overload the truck, it'll tell me. Like if I if I say try to try to stuff 115 on there, maybe just kind of cram it in there, uh, and I try to update that. All right now, what what when you see this this um, little twirler twirl like that? That's never a good sign. Um, it happens occasionally. You know, we've had occasionally. Sometimes we'll get a help ticket, and someone, like one person said last semester, I've been watching the twirl or twirl for a half an hour, and nothing's happening. And I can only imagine how boring that must be. And so, yes, don't don't let computers, you know, drive you nuts. When you see that endless twirl, it means the connection between your browser and our server, for whatever reason, sometimes it gets lost. So when you see that, you can close that box 
And then to, the, to Frank's point, to Steve's point, when in doubt, hit browser refresh. It's a cloud app and, you know, sometimes the vagaries of the internet do what they do. Hit refresh, it'll be good. And then go back to where we were. So what we were doing is we were looking at the factory. We're gonna go back to where we were. We're gonna take a look. That factory truck, did we get it? Is it is okay, we got it. It's a big truck, so we know it's a big truck. We probably didn't make the final correction there on the route. What's let's see. Right, we didn't make the correction on the route. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I was saying, you know, if you if you try to overload the truck, like make it 115 and update that, it's gonna say nope, you tried to put 115 where it could only hold 110. So okay, you got me on that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna instead I'm going to make it, I'm just going to max out the truck. We'll make it 110, 110. There we go. Click update. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my SIM screen. And again, you can, when you've made changes to your model, what, before you run your simulation, you can either click the browser refresh or you'll notice right here, the button will say reload your supply chain either way. And then it'll incorporate the changes you just made to your supply chain model. And then we'll see how well that model works. And I think we have a model that's going to get to 30 days. It's not going to be the greatest model in the world. I'm going to make it run fast. I'm going to click on play. We'll pull back a little bit so we can see what's going on. It's really, I think, also while your supply chain runs, Picture it, um, see the whole supply chain. Uh, mental models are critical. Columns of numbers maybe speak to accountants and engineers. Uh, most, certainly for me, they don't really speak that well. I like pictures and maps are as good a picture of a, of a, of a supply chain, I think, as you can get other than you know, being out there in the real world and having vision that we'll see beyond the horizon because most supply chains stretch beyond the horizon. Anyway, when you can see the whole supply chain working and you kind of click through and you see what's happening at different facilities, like we'll talk about this right there. There's sudden, that sudden jump. That's something known as the butterfly effect. Um, we are going up here. We can see we're still delivering a whole lot of product out there in Indianapolis. But look, as I roll my, as I roll my, yep. Yeah, so we ran past 30 days. Okay. Um, and as you roll your cursor over the blue dots, you can see what day it is. You can see some other information. So anyway, we got out to day 35. All right. Now to that point about having the, the um, downloading your data, creating a PNL. Whenever the, the, the simulation finds a problem and stops, or whenever you, you can also click the stop button and make it stop. Either way, you'll get this export results to Excel. We use Excel generically. It, what it will export is a CSV file. So I click on it. There's that CSV file. You can pull that into any spreadsheet, um, Apple Numbers, Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, any spreadsheet, I believe, anywhere in the world. We'll read a CSV file. If we open that up, you can see the kind of data that's coming down. And we can see we ran for three days, 35 days. So what we've got here in each section of data is labeled. So we've got by day, by facility, we can see what is on hand at the different facilities. And before I go through all of those numbers, minimize that, and I'm going to go to the online guide, and um, the the popular links are are deliberately scattered everywhere, so you almost can't help but stumble across the popular links wherever you may look. They'll be in the text itself. They'll be in the the table of contents on the right side of the screen in the uh, online guide. Anyway, I'm looking for a link called analyzing simulation data and it's in here probably about two times and i'll just keep scanning down i'm hoping that everyone here will take the time to read through this um, it'll help you out 
there's the first instance of it, and there's probably another instance of it later on. There's another instance. There's probably even a third. Here's some things that you should not do. And again, we've talked about that already, but it's, it may be in a little bit more detail there. As we keep going down, I think we have a third one. Anyway, so there it is. I'm going to click on Analyzing Simulation Data. And what it'll do is this is a screen that we didn't include in the Getting Started because you can get you can start to learn it as you start to work with the simulations. And, and we think it's worth reading through this at least once. Um, it tells you how to interpret the data, all useful stuff. I won't go through it here because you can do it. Uh, now you come to a section called Export Simulation Data to Your Computer. This is basic um, spreadsheet stuff, so uh, not pivot tables. I, I don't even know what a pivot table is myself, actually. But when people talk about them, I always pretend like I know what they are. And this, again, tells you a little bit about what we were just looking at in the spreadsheet, there's the different kinds of data. Here's a little bit of, again, some notes, which you can read. Then to import your simulation data. So we just downloaded our data. We just did what this is showing me here. And if you click on a screen, it'll always show you a big copy. So you can look at the screens. We try to make the screens very precise and informative. So uh, you can figure stuff out without having to read too many words. And then to import the data. There's a pretty tight discussion along with some screenshots about basically what we're doing is we're, we're just saying run it, run a few days past 30 and then trim it off. And when you do that trimming, you know, don't just hit the delete. You highlight the excess rows here, as you can see, but don't just hit the delete key because that'll leave the rows in there. Go edit and then under the edit command, Subcommand is delete. That'll delete the whole row because you want those rows. You only want run one row between each segment of the data, and that's what that's what we're talking about here. So everything I'm saying is is also explained here in in the online guide. And then what happens is here is download a copy of the of PNL template reporting template. If I click on that, and and you all should be uh, doing this. Um, whether whether now or later, either way, um, you're going to be, and I'm going to make this screen a little bit, this has gotten really small, bring that up a bit. Okay. Um, this is a Google Sheets. It's uh, a, a template that you can download. You don't need to ask us for edit privileges because you can download your own copy, just what it says right here. Download a copy of this spreadsheet to your computer by clicking on the word file in the top left corner. And once you download it, you can make any change you want. So that's the whole idea. So the word file, in the top left corner, I click on that. And when I come down to there, it says download. And then I'm just gonna download it as an Excel file. Again, any spreadsheet that I'm aware of can read an Excel file and convert it into its own format. So anyway, I'm going to click on Excel. It will download. There it is. And then I'll open it up. And when it when it uh, downloads, it comes with some data already in the. Um, if I click, there, so here it is. Here is now on my computer, a downloaded copy of that PNL spreadsheet reporting template. There are two tabs. And again, all this is explained in the online guide. When I look at the two tabs, one is called PL Report with KPIs, that's where my equations are. And then the other tab called Simulation Data is where the simulation data is. And that's where you basically you cut and paste. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And so once you've cut and paste and put your data in there, it'll generate all of that. And so as you make changes, run your simulation again, cut and paste, put your data in there, and you can generate, actually at the end of each week, you should generate a PL. And you can see, am I getting better? You know, i.e., am I making a profit? Um, so Mike, before we run out of time, because yeah. we're getting down to the last 10 minutes, yep, yep. Uh, we have a request that you show how to uh, download a JSON file yeah. of the actual 
model right. for sharing and for uh, for turning in. Right. So as, as you as you probably already know, each of you know, each week you're going to be creating a copy of your work, uh, both. Uh, both in terms of the reporting sheet and in terms of the actual simulation model that you've built. And again, if if you would, you know, if you're if you're saying, how do I download a copy of my spreadsheet or of my my um, supply chain model? One of the places, and there are, again, this is another one of those links. It's scattered so many places that you can hardly avoid tripping over it. And one place you can trip over it is right here. Download and share supply chain models in the table of contents. So if I click on that, it will take me to a, a page where it shows me how to do that. And again, you know, you can you can click on the screen images; they'll blow up. So everything is explained here. I'll go through it quickly but just know that everything is explained right there. So now if I if I have a simulation model like this one and I like it and I wanna share it with my instructor or I wanna send it to someone else who's using SCM Globe, then what I can do is when I go back to, there's a couple ways you can do it. On your edit screen, if you're working along and you're about to make a big change and, you're edit, and you maybe wanna change something significant Probably a good idea to make a copy before you do that because there's no undo. So if I click on options in my edit screen, it says make a save, create a save state. If I do that, a save state is another way of saying a backup copy. So it just did that. Now, if I go back to my account screen, I can also save a backup copy by clicking on the save um, button right there. In this case, it'll ask me. So maybe I'll call this, I know, Cincy week one and then I'll save that. So either way, and now if we scroll down to the bottom, because your, your account screen has got two parts, there's your active supply chains at the top, your save states at the bottom. So I just, here they are, there's the Cincy test that I just saved from my edit screen, and there's uh, Cincy week one that I just saved, they're both the same. If I wanna download that save state, I, I click on download the save state. So I click on download, and there it is. There's, and what we call them uh, JSON files because the, the, the file ends with a .json, JSON file. So now if you were gonna send it to your instructor, you would just attach that JSON file to an email and then send the email to your instructor. Um, and the same thing for the spreadsheet. You know, you would probably also want to attach the spreadsheet with the simulation data that was generated by the supply chain model that you're sending. So then your instructor can load your model, look at it, run it if they want, and they can also quickly check the spreadsheet and they can start to see how well it runs by looking at the KPIs and, and the finance. And that, Frank, makes the point, Frank makes the point that each week, uh, this, the assignment begins with the previous week's successful simulation file. So, uh, um, you know, getting your file uh, in order, your files in order by week by week, so that you can start with the where where you left off with in the new week is a very important process. And then, and also on on this, for those that are uh, using the collaborative supply chains, you will have to modify your spreadsheet as well as people in Cincinnati. As you begin to add more stores, you'll have to add more columns on your spreadsheet and, and um, a, a student earlier has asked me a question from Collaborative about that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up, let's uh, take a look here. And I will get back to that student in, in um, the, with their question about Collaborative. I just haven't had a chance to look at, look at that, but I will. When you scroll down to the bottom, there's some notes again, I think most everything that we've put up here is relevant. So if it's there, it means you ought to check it out at least for a moment. And then of course you can erase everything. You know, don't keep those notes on there. This is just for you for the first time. You can erase it all once you know it, but here we go. Expand this template to accommodate new products and facilities as you need them. Um, you know, if I look at the cells in the way it's going here, for instance, if I'm gonna add a new store 
right here. Add new columns to display data for new facilities. Add new rows to read and display data for new products. And then specifically, I give you a little bit more technical information. Um, when you, and this is again, this is basic spreadsheet 101, no pivot tables included because I don't know how to use a pivot table. But if I, if I wanna know how did I get this total income number, for instance, and I click <clears throat> there, I can see here's where I got it. This is telling me, there is my formula. <clears throat> if I wanna see how am I reading, like, don't do that. If I wanna look and see um, how do I read the data from my, my simulation uh, data right here. I, I'll click on, on a case here and I can see it's, it's reading simulation data, you know, cell B203. So it's, it's um, just a matter of making sure that you're reading from the right simulation data tabs. That's right. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Uh, again, the student that had the question from collaborative I got your spreadsheet. I'll take a look at it. Um, Mike, we're getting down to the yeah. last five minutes here. Yeah. Well, um, maybe we want to let Jim and uh, yeah, and, yeah, and Frank uh, put in a little bit. Right, right. Frank, the floor is yours. All right. Well, uh, again, I appreciate everybody turning, uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, there's obviously a lot more to uh, involve ourselves with learning uh, how supply chains work. Um, if you run any technical issues, please pass them along to me. If I can't answer them, I will refer the technical issues to um, the CM Globe staff. Uh, but uh, they're not there to try to find the solutions for you. And uh, for that matter, I'm not either. That's the purpose of the weekly SEM Globe discussions in both ASCM 69 and ASCM 31 is to discuss your results. Um, many UMGC courses offer a, a group project and uh, sometimes the class is divided up into teams of several people. Uh, my view is, is that uh, this is a, a class project. Every student in the class can support every other student by uh, describing their frustrations, sharing their answers. Uh, if somebody else had a question or is unable to get something to work, uh, chime in with how you think it can be solved. Uh, this is a group uh, help session, if you will. Uh, so with that, I'm, I am hoping that uh, you'll find the simulation as being both challenging and rewarding. Uh, I can tell you that uh, there'll be a moment of frustration, but don't let those overwhelm you. Uh, as you will in your career, you're going to encounter new software, new systems, and part of the reason for um, the reliance upon the user guide is you're going to be expected to learn new systems throughout your career by reading user manuals. And so for that reason, uh, this is a practicum to try to understand the supply chain simulation software by relying on the user manual. You never use it too much. Just about every question or issue that you will encounter is in there. And uh, I certainly have to commend the SCM Globe staff for a very thorough uh, um, and improved user manual over the uh, period of time that UMGC has been using the simulation. So with that, uh, we're at 7.58. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, Jim, if you have any comments, or Michael and Steve, if you have any closing remarks, I appreciate it. Of course, um, Emmanuel asked with the recording of this webinar be posted to the class. It'll probably be a few days from now. And uh, whether it's this one or the uh, recording tomorrow, we'll go ahead and post a recording uh, that seems to be the best fit for uh, the way the presentation evolved. So uh, thank you all very much for attending and I'll turn it back over to you, Jim if you have some uh, closing comments and then to Michael and Steve. 
Uh, nothing to add, Frank. Thank you for summarizing that. Excellent work. Um, um, Michael, that's all I have. Thank the students for, um, like Frank said, attending tonight and um, getting information and education from Michael and Steve. Thank you so very much. And <clears throat> also to Emmanuel about posting the recording. We'll do that. But remember, it's an hour and a half of incoherent rambling by yours truly. And the online guide is a whole lot more succinct and much more organized. And actually, in a recent UMGC seminar from, I think, February, there are we pulled out little snippets. And it's yours truly and Frank. Uh, Frank and I had kind of some good conversation with some students here. So there's little snippets of useful stuff here. The whole hour will be online for your listening pleasure. But again, I would use that as a last resort. I would look elsewhere in the user guide first. Um, thank you and, and good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.